Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 165. Geometry in pre-K to two is more than just knowing names of shapes. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Before we get into the episode, this week's positivity comes from the Build Math Minds Facebook group yet again. This group is a place to ask questions about the teaching and learning of math and to ask advice for activities to get your students engaged with mathematics. I loved seeing this post by Teresa because she had a specific activity that she had heard about, but she couldn't find it and she couldn't quite remember all the details. So she asked the group and she got her answer. If you aren't a part of the Build Math Minds Facebook group, you can join by going to facebook.com slash groups slash build math minds. It's a great place to crowdsource your questions about teaching math. Well, springtime is upon us and it is often the time of the year that we turn towards geometry concepts. I feel like it's often left until the end of the year just in case we run out of time. Geometry concepts are often seen as kind of less important than other math concepts, but they really help lay a foundation of spatial reasoning, and that helps students as they progress throughout all that they are going to do in mathematics. My number one recommendation for helping students build their understanding of geometry is actually to be working on it throughout the year. I'll link to another video of mine that has my top three tips when it comes to understanding measurement and geometry for elementary students. But since we are at the end, or not at the end, but we are nearing the end of the school year, if you haven't spent much time on geometry, I'm going to share one of the big ideas in pre-K to two to be working with your students on. This comes from the Navigating Book series. These are just a couple of them that I have there for all the different grade bands, all the different math concepts. Uh, The Navigating Book series is from the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. And from the research I did, I did a little digging, but it looks like NCTM no longer has this series on their website to purchase. But if you dig a little bit on Amazon, you can find them. There's navigating through algebra, navigating through measurement, navigating through number and operations, and almost all the topics in elementary grades. These came out in the early 2000s. Um, My geometry one has a copyright of 2001, which was my second year of teaching. I love these books and I still continue to find them useful because of the way that they were written. The authors laid out some big ideas in the teaching and learning of that particular math concept. And then they gave detailed activities that you can do with your students to help them build those big ideas. I just really enjoy the format of these books. And if you can find them and get your hands on them, I highly recommend them. So we're going to take a look at what navigating through geometry in pre-K to two has to say about one of the big ideas in geometry. There are four big ideas that they address in that book. Chapter two is about location and position. Chapter three is about transformations and symmetry. Chapter four is about visualization, spatial reasoning, and modeling. And chapter one is about two and three dimensional shapes. And that is what I'd like to talk to you about in this episode. When we tend to think geometry in the early elementary grades, the number one thing that comes to mind is shapes, identifying shapes, naming shapes. But what do young kids really need to develop about shapes beyond just naming them? On pages two to three, they write, Analyzing characteristics and properties of shapes. By the time the youngest children begin formal schooling, they have already formed many concepts of shape. Although their understanding is largely at the level of recognizing shapes by their general appearance, and they frequently describe shapes in terms of familiar objects, such as a box or a ball, 
In the primary grades, children should have ample opportunities to refine and focus their understanding and to gradually develop a mathematical vocabulary. They also should learn to recognize and name the parts of two and three dimensional shapes, such as the sides and the quote unquote corners or vertices. Teachers should provide frequent hands-on experiences with materials, including technology, that help the students focus on attributes of various shapes, such as that a square is a special rectangle with, four, all, with all four sides the same length, or that pyramids always have triangular faces that meet at a common point. Experiences that promote such outcomes include building and drawing shapes, comparing shapes and describing how they are alike and how they are different, Shorting, <laughs> sorting shapes according to one or more attributes, cutting or separating shapes into component parts, and reassembling the parts to form the original or different shapes, and identifying shapes found in everyday objects or in the classroom, home, or neighborhood. Throughout such activities, teachers must take care to ensure that the children encounter both examples and non-examples of common shapes, and that they see those examples in many different contexts and orientations so that they learn to identify a triangle or a rectangle, for example, no matter what material it is made of or how it is positioned in space. Now I wanna reiterate this part so that you focus on the type of experiences. And let me just say that I love they were using the term experiences back in the early 2000s. I like to say experiences as well instead of lesson or activity because we want kids experiencing math. And now I'm wondering if those books are where I got the term from. Okay, so again, here's the types of experiences they say the kids should be having around two and three dimensional shapes. And I want you to compare that to what your textbook is having kids in pre-K to second do. And if you aren't doing some of these things, maybe you could try adding them in here towards the end of the school year. Experiences that promote such outcomes include building and drawing shapes comparing shapes and describing how they are alike and how they are different, sorting shapes according to one or more attributes, cutting or separating shapes into component parts and reassembling the parts to form the original or different shapes, and identifying shapes found in everyday objects or in the classroom, home, or neighborhood. Throughout such activities, teachers must take care to ensure that the children encounter both examples and non-examples of common shapes. All of those are important experiences to do with your students, but remember, you need to be careful that you aren't always using the same example for, this, for a certain shape. And that's where that last type of experience can be helpful. helpful. <laughs> Making sure you are exposing students to examples and non-examples of common shapes. When we overuse the same example for one shape and we always have it positioned the same way, students start to think that that is the only example of that shape. I don't remember where I saw it, but I do remember learning how young kids are typically only shown an equilateral triangle, like set on the base, one that you would consider the base, where it goes up to the point like this as the example for a triangle in the early grades. So when they are shown like an obtuse triangle like this, they say it is not a triangle. But when they are shown an image like this, and for those of you who are just listening via the podcast, it's basically a drawing uh, that looks just like an equilateral triangle, but the top does not connect. But the kids will say that that is a triangle but it's only because it looks like the shape that they always typically see for a triangle. So by doing experiences with your students that they need to look at examples and non-examples, it forces them to pay attention to the characteristics and properties of shapes to help those students get beyond just naming those shapes in the early grades. All right, until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.